Hi, this is Julie Coons, and we're here with another episode of ERA TV. And today we're with Rick Petrie, Creative Writer, LLC. Welcome, Rick. Thank you. So you just recently presented a session here at the D2C convention in the D2C Learning Lounge, which was part of an experimental 15-minute session on our show floor. Tell us a bit about your presentation. Sure. Well, I compliment you. It was a great format. Thank you. Uh, I think people have short attention spans, and they've got information overload. So what we tried to do was we took a look at the top 20 short-form DRTV commercials as ranked by the Infomercial Monitoring Service to see you know, what are the commonalities in these. And what we did is we tried to call 10 learnings that we could pull out that the audience could take to the bank to make their own marketing communications more powerful. And uh, you know, basically 10 learnings in about 10, 12 minutes. Terrific. Well, what trends are you seeing in short form right now? Well, a couple of things. Um, one thing is uh, 15 of the 20 used voiceovers. And when you think about our economy right now, it's a lot less expensive to produce a commercial and also change a commercial if you use a voiceover to tell the story versus an on-air personality. So a lot of times you'll hear people say, well, I need a celebrity, right? There are a few that do that. Certainly nobody does it better than proactive, but most marketers don't have the budget to get that kind of A-list endorsement. So I think that's one trend that I see. Another thing is um, that no one reveals their shipping and handling. Does it become... Um, profanity in the eyes of the consumer, the, the, the word shipping and handling, uh, and yet shipping and handling is not free. And uh, the simple fact is they want people to raise their hand, call or go online, learn more about the product and hopefully buy, and they don't want that to be a turnoff. Another thing that we're seeing is the advent of the BOGO, buy one, get one free type of offer. Out of the top 20, 10 of them featured BOGO offers. And I have kind of mixed feelings about this because it puts a lot of pressure on your cost of goods sold if you have to build in the idea that you're going to get a second unit. Now, of course, um, they all charge a separate processing fee, which I suspect would typically cover the cost of goods. Um, the other thing is they all, you know, have the, but wait, there's more. They all use sweeteners. The average uh, value of the sweeteners was about $60. So the average price point was about $19.95 plus shipping undisclosed amount, but you're telling people that you're getting about $80 worth of product with the $60 in sweeteners. So imagine, if you will, how much pressure that puts on what your actual cost has to be in order for you to succeed in DRTV. One of the things that concerns me about these trends is that we sort of engender this Pavlovian response, like they really fully expect they're, they're going to get this, that, and the other thing, or that they're going to get two for one, and, and so on. Whereas I think the focus should be on innovation, creating value, being able to justify your price point as opposed to all these gimmicks. What does, I mean, that sounds like an unsustainable business model to me. I mean, it, so is this because most of these short forms are then driving to retail and therefore one makes it up on volume versus those that you transact? I mean, tell me yeah. a little bit about that. Yeah, if you talk to uh, the marketers that are here on the floor, and I'm talking about All Star who did the Snuggie and Ontel who distributed Pillow Pets, Telebrands did a panel in uh, New Orleans that I helped, uh, helped put together. They are all using DRTV to drive um, mass uh, sell through at, re at traditional bricks and mortar retail. You know, it's funny because we all see these as seen on TV sections of stores like places like Walgreens, and I've always kind of thought, well, geez, it seems kind of counterintuitive that a magic kit would be next to a laundry ball, which would be next to, you know, a snuggie. But the fact of the matter is there's tens of millions of dollars of advertising, in some cases hundreds of millions, driving that. One of the pillow products, for example, had $80 million worth of product at retail distributed last December using DRTV to create the nag factor among kids. And if you were out in the holidays, you saw that that pillow, pillow was everywhere, everywhere on every end cap, et cetera, because the kids are saying, hey, you know, I want that. And, you know, it's a $20 bill. So we're in this lousy recession, and it's like 1995, you can swing that. Right. So it's okay in some cases for these marketers to, to create the kind of, if you will, uh, inverted model that you're talking about earlier, this sort of $80 worth of expectation, because it's going to get picked up on the retail end. And it balances itself out? I think so. Okay. I also think that our consumers are smart. 
they figure out all of our tactics and our, and our little tricks and so on and so forth. In fact, they can recite them back to you. If you go to a cocktail party and you ask somebody about you know, this category of advertising, they know all the buzz terms. They can go, for a separate processing fee, they'll play it back to you. Mm-hmm. So I think, our, again, our challenge as an industry, you're absolutely spot on. How can we sustain this? It really goes back to getting focused on great products with great value to the consumer, with social networking and, and, and buzz and so forth. There's no place to hide if you don't have a great product. Conversely, uh, John Conda had just come by. If you have a terrific product like P90X, these people are evangelical about your product. All right, Rick, well, thank you very much. And again, thank you for joining us for another episode of ERA TV. My pleasure.